Hello everyone and welcome to the Redmen TV and it's a very exciting day for me and Amy as today we are joined by Liverpool women's defender Leanne Rubb. Leanne, welcome to Hi. the show. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. <laughs> um, we're just going to have a little chat to Leanne, ask her a few questions and help everyone get to know her a little bit better. So first off, you've obviously recently joined the club, so I'm from Millwall in the summer. Yeah. Um, how do you feel you've settled into the club? Um, I've settled in really well. Um, all the girls are really nice. Um, everyone sort of just clicked and gelled straight away, which is quite weird. Everyone was saying, like, I've never been in a team like this where everyone is literally just on the same wavelength yeah. and so friendly and on the same mission. So it was really helpful that we've got a good set of people. It wasn't the start that we would have hoped for on the first day. So what was the morale like in the squad and how did you all bounce back from that? Yeah, it wasn't the start that we were hoping for. Um, but to be honest, afterwards in the change room, like I said, because the players as a people are so good, um, it wasn't a case of like sometimes you can get like pointing fingers. It was all like, yeah. okay, something's gone wrong today, like massively. So we just sat down, reflected, looked at sort of what went wrong and how to put it right and we have bounced back since then so yeah you said previously that you you've played for a, a local boys team when you yeah. were younger kind of how, how did you get involved with that and what what was the kind of reaction from people such as parents coaches things that what was in that environment obviously being a girl yeah. in a boys club yeah um yeah so I first got into the boys team when I think I was seven years old that just happened for while I was um a bit of a tomboy now I was younger so I was always <laughs> yeah. Yeah, messing longer. around <laughs> with the boys in class getting told off on the mischievous one so <laughs> it was just naturally then going out at playtime they'd all be playing football so I'd then yeah. go and play with them yeah. and then it just got to one of the tournaments we had at the school and so I went and played that and one of the boys dads um who's manager of the local team he was watching so he asked me if I wanted to go and play for him so I did um which was nice but I say typically with our there weren't as many girls playing back then because you are talking I don't even know how many years <laughs> but um majority were fine but you would always get the comment oh they've got a girl on their team like you'd always hear that when you're playing in opposition and Sometimes there'll be parents, oh, like, it's only a girl, da da da. And my yeah. mum would be like, that's my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was it was good. There were boys were supportive. There was a few in the team that when I'd get play of the match, they wouldn't like it. But she <laughs> always gets it. And I think actually, from having the comments about, oh, is that a girl, da da da, yeah. I think that actually spurred me on even more because yeah, I want to yeah. prove them wrong. So I Definitely. think that is where I used to get my, like, you'll see my defending my aggression and yeah. things like that because I'd always just be determined to be like, no, I can tell you, even though I'm a yeah. girl. It's, for a lot of people out there, obviously, women's football is getting bigger and bigger yeah. as it goes on. For you, what is the life of Leanne Rove? What goes on, well, footballing and personal wise, whatever. Cause but it's just interesting yeah. for people to see. Like, yeah. Because they've obviously got a perspective on what men's like. They train this many times yeah. a week, they do this, matches, whatever. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, well, I'm interested as well to yeah. see what it's like from a women's perspective, whether it's the same or whether they've got yeah. differences. I'd say in terms of the training and that sort of, say, lifestyle routine, it is pretty much the same. Um, other than probably the days. We mainly play on Sundays, so Mondays yeah, yeah. you'd have a rest day, um, but that's really important to, even though you've got a day off, to, to make sure you're not yeah, out yeah. gallivanting, you need to be yeah. refueling, <laughs> resting, um, and recovering. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, we then go in and have a recovery session. Yeah. Um, Wednesday will be a double session, that's a tough day. So oh, oh, you train for about two hours and that'll be high intensity and then do a gym session after. You get a little no, bit of food. No. You get a little bit of food in between, don't worry. Good. <laughs> um and then Thursdays that's another rest day. Um Friday sort of lighter day and Saturday that'll be just prepping. Is that like um, a travelling day as well? Well, yeah, you have a light session in the morning, um and then travelling if it's an away yeah. game or just resting if not, and then obviously game Sunday. And then, yeah, so that's the routine football wise. Oh, we have a gym session Friday as well. Oh, oh, can't that. get that another one. Double, <laughs> another double session. Um, yeah, aside from that football wise, in say like our downtime, it is pretty much just, I don't know, going to the shopping on your day off, maybe going yeah. for a coffee, that sort of thing watching TV, you you are generally tired. Like I, my first year, obviously 
coming up to WSL1 yeah. as a yeah. professional and at first I was like what am I going to do with all this free yeah. time but <laughs> generally you're so tired from training you don't want to go out because it's yeah. like okay if I'm feeling a bit tired I'm then going to go off like out in town or go shopping but then the next day you're just thinking in training especially if you've got a double session my legs going to be dead so you yeah. actually just want to sit in and do nothing <laughs> which yeah. is nice. So you mentioned earlier that like you all sort of clicked instantly type of, type of thing just spend time with each other like on your days off so you obviously yeah. all, some people live together just all like go out of, I mean, you, you yeah really more times than but. not we'll um more times than not we'll spend time together yeah. um just go i like say go for a coffee or go into town although there's not many people who come into town with me now shopping because they know what I'm like. Satara, Are you a bit of a shopper? Satara said she's never coming with me again and Franz then also said she's never coming with me again. So like in terms of remainder of the season then, we've still got, still got quite a long way to go. But what are you hoping to achieve this season or in the future? Obviously, we're still on a bit of like a, a building process at the minute, but what do you want to achieve while you're at Liverpool? For me, obviously, making the step up from WSL1, it's a lot, sorry, from WSL2 to WSL1, the tempo is a lot quicker, like you've got to think quicker. So yeah. that was a massive thing for me. It was just sort of, it's good stuff and now train every day, so I've got a lot of time to work yeah. on it. But it was, yeah, just hopefully taking my game to the next level and developing as much as I can. Obviously, utilising that we're in most days of the week, so I'm always making sure that I'm concentrating and focusing on what I need to get better at. I have still got the building to do, but to be honest, I feel like, and the rest of the team feel like we are basically there now. It's just yeah. fine tuning the last little bits. Yeah. Um, like the little link up to create more chances, score more goals and just make sure we stay tight defensively. So yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. the same really as what we set out at the start of the season, just competing in every single game and then the results will come through themselves. So like if young girls are wanting to get in football now, like what would you say is like the, the best thing for them to do? Like would you have that, like obviously if they love football, they're going to be playing it regularly, they'll be joining the team and there's like been an increase in young girls teams now like we both played in them yeah amy still plays in one well, yeah. like, <laughs> well not not for the minute but um like what would your your advice be to them getting into football so for girls who were starting out and wanting to have that as an end goal where they can be professional one day yeah. then it is just about like i say always working hard um practicing and focusing on your game and then like you say once they feel ready um putting themselves out there going to trials doing extra training where they can um, and then take it from there really. Yeah. That's just putting the work in, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that is massively it. That was like, for me last year, well, from the last few years in WSL2, like we was only training twice a week, but in my head I knew like, okay, if I want to be professional, then I need to be as good as them. So yeah. they're training every day, we're training twice a week. So I'd go out and do extra sessions to try and get wow, my quality yeah. up. So it's little things like that where you have to look at sort of the players who are where you're aspiring to be and what sort of their lifestyle is and yeah. try and match that before you've got there so you're ready sort yeah. of thing. Definitely. That's yeah. great. Brilliant. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to check out Leanne's social media and give her a follow over there. Uh, make sure to like the video, comment and subscribe and we'll see you all soon.